Welcome to the fifth video in Mobidax tutorial series, how to deploy a centralized cryptocurrency trading platform using open source software. In this video, we will prepare Twilio and SendGrid credentials for email and SMS services. This will get our built-in KYC process working and establish end user communication. Let's get started. All right, so in this video, I will show you how to configure your Twilio and SendGrid. Uh, in our deployment files. Now, in order to do that, first of all, we, we need to have our OpenDAX prod repository cloned, as well as our virtual machines provisioned and, and all of that. So if you haven't done that already, please consider watching our previous videos up to this point. Now, if you have, you should have this repository that's called OpenDAX prod, and you should have the main configuration file that is available right here. So it's config app.ml. I already opened it in, uh, in this um, window. Uh, so you can see here we have two sections that we uh, need to have a look at today. So the first one being Twilio, that's a um, service responsible for sending SMS uh, to our end users. This is needed uh, to perform phone verification um, on your end users. And we also have this SMTP configuration. That one is used to send emails uh, to your end users once again. And uh, uh, we, uh, this, our system, our platform, it allows you to send emails on different events. I'll show you a bit later uh, which events those are. And you can also customize email templates so that you uh, your email template is uh, obviously mm, within your branding structure and looking nice and neat. All right, so let's start with Twilio. <clears throat> what you have to do is you have to uh, sign up for Twilio. Uh, I'm, I, will, I'll no, I will not show that process in this video because it's very straightforward. You just create an account, uh, you um, give it some balance, uh, you create a, a number uh, for yourself that's going to be sending your SMS and please uh, make sure that this number is available in the countries that you will be servicing uh, with your platform so that everyone has it working fine and correctly. Now, once you've done that, so there are three things that you need. You need a number, you need an account seat that is uh, given to you by default, and you need the auth token. So we have all of, all of those three things. So let's just fill in the configuration. So this is our uh, number. Let's do that. All right, then we have account seed, which is here. Let's change that as well. And then we have the auth token. So let's do that as well. And now here you can also customize the template for your SMS. So we can, you know, your confirmation code, we can say for BitSide, for example is and then you can also change this message to be whatever you want it to be so that your users definitely understand it you can also uh, make it you know in two different languages for example if you're going to be working with uh, different users in different countries so that is it for Twilio we will show you how it works uh, after we deploy everything and you'll see it in action uh, but this is like the required configuration so that we can actually deploy this thing now let's move on to our uh, SendGrid configuration now for that you have to uh, also have an account on SendGrid um, and uh, again I will not show that process because it's uh, like it's very easy very straightforward and these uh, services are helpful in, in that sense, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now, you need to create an API key and call it uh, API key. Give it full access, create and view. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, my session has kind of expired, so let me just log in again. Right, I log in again, so what you have to do is you go to settings, API keys, you create a new API key. Uh, let's do that. So you call it API key, create and view. Now you copy this uh, and you fill in, fill it in in the config. So user is API key. That's what we had. And then the password is this. And now we need to change sender email so that uh, the sender for uh, our end users is on your domain. So we have to do like this and sender name. Let's call it, for example, uh, bit site. 
Okay, and that's it for actually the actual config that you have to fill in. Now I'll show you where the email templates are located. So the email templates are located here in config mailer templates. And you can see here are different email templates for different events. So for example, when a deposit is uh, accepted on the platform, you can send your user an email. You can send an email when email is confirmed for this user. No, sorry, that's not when it is confirmed, that's to confirm it. Uh, then you can uh, send in mail when the label is created for the user, when, when he created a new beneficiary, for password reset, for a session, so when user logs in, you can send him an email, or when his withdrawal has succeeded. And you can actually change these emails. So these are like HTML documents, uh, but they also have some templating stuff. So let's, uh, I'll show you right here. So right here is your um, template. So that's understandable to Ruby. So this is uh, the type of things that will be parsed in here. You can see here record.token, record.domain. You can check that out in uh, every, uh, email template we have right here and you can also configure <clears throat> you can also configure um, okay yeah this these are the templates but uh, you can also do some configuration to the mailer I suppose uh, let's do that so templates config yeah, like, like right here, you can also do some configuration for the mailer, so you can check which events uh, the email templates are sent on, and you can also see that you can specify different languages uh, for which to send emails. And that's available right here. And these events, as you can see here, like deposit updated, exchange PTO, they are taken from RabbitMQ. So we have in, in this platform, in this infrastructure, we have a RabbitMQ that exchanges messages. So when different events happen and this mailer component, it just consumes the messages from different exchanges in RabbitMQ, as you can see right here. And it sends out emails when that message is consumed uh, through that RabbitMQ. Uh, so if you want to uh, send some custom emails on some custom events in RabbitMQ, you can uh, also check out uh, the available events that PTO or Barong supports. These are our two components. PTO is the one responsible for trading and Barong is responsible for authentication and KYC. So you can also check out that and um, configure some custom emails if you want. Um, I guess uh, that's kind of it and I hope it explains it really well. If you still happen to have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comment section down below. Or That is a wrap for video number 5. In the next video I will show you how to deploy mainnet Ethereum and Bitcoin nodes. Leave your comments and subscribe to Mobidoc's channel and join our Telegram community, link in the description. Have a great day everyone, see you next time.